Welcome back, everyone. So we've been talking about extremum seeking control, and we've been uh, applying this in MATLAB with some simple, uh, some simple system here. We basically took a static objective function and built a very, very simple extremum seeking controller to track, uh, to optimize that optimizing control input u that maximizes this objective function. We also wrote a script uh, to essentially show what this would look like in a digital, uh, a digital loop. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can apply extremum seeking control to a very challenging uh, dynamical system that would be very hard to control. Uh, this is an example that's actually from Kartik and Kristik's uh, book on extremum seeking control from 2003, uh, Wiley. So I encourage you to go check that out uh, if you want more details on how they actually chose the system and designed it. But this is basically a system that was designed to be about as nasty as possible. Okay, so you have some objective function f. Uh, basically, you know, we're going to step our objective function. There's some ramp in the, the optimizing control u star. So the, the u that optimizes the subjective function is ramping linearly. There's going to be a step, a discontinuous step in the optimum value of j. Um, and in addition to that, that static objective function where the u star is, is varying and j has the step in time, this gets multiplied by input dynamics and output dynamics. So there will be actual dynamical systems, some ODEs, some transfer functions on the inputs and outputs here and here that give this thing its own internal dynamics and time scales, making it much, much more challenging to control. In particular, uh, I think that they've given this thing a right half plane zero, which makes it very difficult to control. So that means that this will be non-minimum phase, if I ramp my u, my system actually turns in the wrong direction for a little bit before it then goes up. Uh, and so I think this, this is a very, very hard system. If you were going to even have the equations, it would be hard to design a good control law. But here we're going to assume we don't actually know what the equations are, and we're going to like tune this thing to control it. So this is a kind of a power demonstration of extremum seeking control on a very challenging uh, control problem with a right half plane zero, a changing optimum u star, and a discontinuous jump in the dynamics in this objective function at some time. Uh, but the basic architecture is the same. So here what I'm doing is I have my, my output function plus these, these dynamics. I have a bunch of blocks that dump data to the workstation, to the, to the um, to MATLAB's environment so that I can plot theta, which is the optimizing u. I can plot uh, the cost function j. Um, I have this thing to add my sinusoidal perturbation. Um, and then basically this is all the same as what we've been doing before. I have a high pass filter. I have an integrator. I multiply a phase shifted version of my input sinusoid. But here I'm adding some sensor noise. So I'm assuming that my measurement of the subjective function is a little bit noisy. So it's, it's an imperfect measurement. I have sensor noise. Um, and in this case, uh, Kartik and Kristik actually showed that you had to phase shift this demodulating sine wave uh, to get it to work. So this is a really hard example where you have to phase shift it. Um, their integrator is also not just a 1 over s simple integrator. It's more of like a washout low pass plus integrator. It's a funky integrator. I'm going to actually zoom in and look. So it's uh, 50s minus 200 divided by s minus 0.01. Okay, so it's not a perfect integrator, but it's got these kind of a big gain and some other, some other dynamics. Okay, so long story short, you take the basic extremum seeking control loop where you high pass filter, demodulate, and integrate uh, with some sinusoidal perturbation. And mostly nothing changes, but you tweak the integrator a little bit uh, and you phase shift the perturbation signal. And those allow you to kind of tune the system to control this very, very challenging uh, system. Okay, so I'm just going to run this. Uh, we're going to see what the output is and see that it actually works. Uh, this is also, um, the code for this is online. This is also in, in, uh, in our book, uh, my book with Nathan Kutz on data-driven science and engineering. So you can see some of the output figures and run the code yourself. Okay, I'm going to run this. Let's hope everything works. It compiles, it's running, it's running, it's ready. And so I've dumped all of this stuff to the, to the, um, to the, what is it called? The workspace. So now I can plot the control knob theta. So theta is my, um, theta is the, um, 
the control that, that the system is actually commanding. It should be a ramp. The optimizing control is a ramp. And we can also plot the output y when it tracks this, this step. So let's, let's just play around with this a little bit. So uh, I'm going to try, let's see, plot. Uh, let's see if I have a t variable. I'm not sure if I, there is such a t. Let's plot theta. OK, so this is that control knob. And basically, it's trying to track this linear ramp. And it's actually doing a decent job. So notice that this big hiccup right here, that's where the, um, the cost function had a big jump from a step from 0 to 1 at time 1. OK, so the control is doing its thing. There's this massive change in the system dynamics. So there's this huge correction to u. But then it actually gets back on the right track pretty quickly and tracks this linear ramp. So that's very impressive, I think, especially considering that this is non-minimum phase and it has a right half plane 0. Let's also plot um, y, the output. So this is the objective function. This is also pretty cool. So the objective function, the optimal j, uh, goes from 0 to 0 0.05 at time 1. And you can see that even though this thing has nasty nonlinear dynamic, or sorry, not nonlinear, but non-minimum phase dynamics, sensor noise, um, all of this, this nastiness, when the system changes at time one, the controller almost immediately compensates and nails very like rock solid objective function output, even though the control is doing this crazy uh, trajectory and it's tracking this, this ramping U star. The optimizing control input is changing, it's drifting, but the output doesn't notice any of this. So, so even if I had this really nasty system, if I clipped on the special extreme of seeking control law, as far as the output is concerned, when the system changes, I immediately track and maintain optimal performance, even though under the hood, the controller is just like massively compensating for these dynamics. So I think this is a very, very cool example. I love that this was you know, one of the showcase examples in Kartik and Christic's book, because this is a super hard system. They took their method and applied it to just a really, really nasty problem. And it, it, works, uh, it works great. So uh, play around with this. You know, honestly, it'll take a little time even to understand why their, their system is so hard to control. Try to design a different controller for it. Uh, and then play around with some of the knobs. Change the, um, you know, change the filter frequency, change the integrator gain, change all of those things and see, see how this performs. OK, uh, so that's it. You've seen extreme of seeking control on a simple static objective function as an illustration. But now you've seen it applied to a very nasty, hard to control system. And I think you're ready to start trying this on, on your own systems of interest. OK, thank you.